What's up you guys, it's Joey, and I'll be teaching you how you can get your own one-year master's degree. If you haven't seen my video on my two-year bachelor's at Boston University, go check that out, learn some tips, and see what you can find. But for this video, it's about my ECE master's degree at Carnegie Mellon University. I felt like I wanted to take the degree because I wanted to expand on those topics in bachelor's where it only gave me a small taste, but I really wanted to see where it can propel me in this field. So I took cool courses in machine learning, cloud architecture, wireless architecture, um, security, and computer architecture. And I really felt like it went so in depth that it was really transformative for me and it was definitely worth it. Now for the degree itself, I finished it in only one year. Usually these things take about 1.5 to 2 years, but hey, if I could finish a bachelor's in two, why not cut the master's in half to one? So that's exactly what I did. Now, I'll go over in this video the first part about the whole application process, what it was like to get accepted in there, and the scores that I needed to, and the second part of the video will be focused on the actual degree itself, and the courses I took, and what it was like to actually finish it, and the workload about it. The final part will just be about my whole reflection about the whole thing. I started applying for the graduate schools in my final year of undergrad, which interestingly enough, is only the second year. I first applied to Boston University because their rule is that if you're already a BU student and you have above a 3.4 GPA, then you're immediately accepted into the master's degree program, which is awesome because I had a 3.72 GPA. Furthermore, you don't have to take the GRE. And when I got accepted and immediately got the offer, I saw that they gave me a half tuition scholarship and the program would only take me one whole year. Half scholarship plus one year, that was really awesome. So because of that, I had a great choice starting off. The other schools that I wanted to apply for were also the top schools, like the Ivy Leagues and the things that would really be boosting my resume. So I applied for Harvard, Stanford, USC, UCLA, Cornell, and Carnegie Mellon University. So given that these are all good schools, I would need to make sure I have a good GRE school score if I want to actually get into the school. Well first, I assumed that I would just get a perfect score in math because I've always had a good strong math background. I took the practice test a few times. All the math questions were super easy. So it would only come down to the reading portion and the writing portion. So for the reading portion, I saw that that's a part I had the most difficulty on. So I really crammed the reading portion because I didn't know exactly how to study for the writing portion since there's not like an auto grader that would grade your essay for you. I actually just didn't study for the writing part that much, but it actually was fine because I was pretty confident in my writing skills at the time. So how did the actual test scores go? For the math, I got 170 out of 170. For the verbal part, I got 163 out of 170. And finally for writing, I got 5.5 out of 6. Now, for the math, I expected to get 170 because I was felt pretty confident about every single question even before I took the test. However, for the writing part, that's what really shocked me. How did I get that 5.5 out of 6? Well, what I did was that when I came to the test, I didn't even know the format of the, the prompts. I didn't know how long the prompts were supposed to be before I took the test. I kind of just winged it. But in the back of my mind, I told myself, the key to a good essay is to make sure you focus on the content. You focus on the analysis, the pros and the cons. Treat it like it's a debate. Show that you're thinking analytically about everything. Go into the very specifics and see all the branches of how the different argument can come out. If you go into the specifics, the writing of the grammar is not going to matter at all. Even if you're not a native English speaker, that doesn't matter. What matters is what's actually in your mind, the actual analytics. So if you can show that you actually think deeply and rather than just having good grammar, you actually think deeply about the topics, then you're going to get a good score. As for the reading part where I got 163 out of 170, I was pretty happy with it. It wasn't the perfect score, but hey, I still thought it was my weakest subject, so 163 is pretty great. So another critical piece about the graduate school process is the personal statement. This is where you write an essay about yourself and really show yourself off. But here's the thing, in the personal statement, you don't want it to be like so personal that it's generic. Actually, my recommendation is that you go really specific on the projects and maybe even if that makes you seem a little less human, they want to see people who are smart and committed to the field. So be really specific about the projects you took, the classes you took, and show that you actually know engineering. And in terms of the personal details that I did include, I just made sure to be clear about like why I wanted to apply to those places. For example, 
for CMU, I applied to the CMU Silicon Valley campus. And I said the reason why I wanted to be in the Silicon Valley campus rather than Pittsburgh was because that campus was only a 10 minute drive from my house. So that would make it super easy to commute to school. And also I'd be close to the companies in the Bay Area. So just be really honest about your personal reasons and just be very specific about your knowledge. They want to have smart people into their program. So given all this, here are the schools I got accepted into. I got accepted into BU's PhD program, CMU, Cornell, and finally USC. And I was completely mind blown. I didn't believe that I could get into all of these really awesome schools. Getting to an Ivy League like Cornell, getting into CMU, which is a top school for ECE. I mean, it was really mind blowing. Given these great choices, I picked CMU Silicon Valley. I didn't pick the Pittsburgh campus because I felt like I didn't want to pay rent. I can live in my own house in the Bay Area. And also I just didn't like the weather and I want to be closer to the Bay Area companies. And it was really cool because in my opinion, I feel like the CMU Silicon Valley campus is actually better, but that's another video topic. You know what? At the beginning, I was super nervous and I felt like I would go into the school, the youngest person there, and you know, it'd be difficult making friends. And I was scared that maybe everybody would have like years of industry experience, be so much smarter. I'd just be out of place. I wouldn't really know how to fit in with everybody, but actually all those concerns were not really true. I felt like everybody was really collaborative. It was one of the best learning experiences I've ever been in. I was able to make friends with two really cool people. I studied with them all the time and we always hung out all the time. And because of that, it always felt like even when I was studying late with them, it never really felt like studying. It just felt like hanging out. And also everybody was just so friendly that we'd always collaborate together, share study sessions together. And it didn't feel like people were competing with each other in a malice way. It felt like if there was any competition, everybody was competing for their own general learning and for their own general interest in the subject. And that's what I thought was maybe the best part about the program. It really taught me how to work together in a team with people in a really good way. I took it really seriously for my master's degree. I mean, this is where I actually have to take four courses a semester of graduate level courses to finish in one year. And this is not just like any school, it's CMU, the hardest school for ECE. So I felt like I definitely needed to up my game. I made sure to really finish my assignments on time early and improve my discipline and really get together with my friends. And lucky to say, I finished with a GPA of 3.83, which is higher than my bachelor's GPA of 3.72, even given it's a harder school in a master's degree with harder classes. So basically, I do really think at the end of the day, what really helped me out the most was just, again, the collaborative environment. And I think that's one of the greatest things you can learn from a graduate program, the maturity of the people and really how to collaborate together with people who are just really motivated to expand their learning. So one of CMU's strongest assets is it's learning by doing. They give you assignments that are tough, but they definitely make sure that these assignments are keeping up to date with the field and you're definitely learning so much when you're taking these classes. Another thing is that the group assignments that you do really feel like a startup and it really feels like you are learning. So for example, with the group assignments, you would form a group and come up with a project. You're given some guidance and then finally you have to present on it. So for example, I worked on a pet tracker device and getting some measurements for a wireless radio and tried to optimize for energy, a auction simulator for cloud pricing, a neuromorphic algorithm to make low energy machine learning. All of it is really cool stuff. So the really learning by doing aspect is I think CME's greatest tool. Another great thing that happened here is I got to join the Boss Barbell Club, which is a gym that's owned by Dan Green, one of the strongest powerlifters. And as someone who myself is a big fan of powerlifting, seeing so many strong people motivate me was like, man, I'm getting to do some cool things in the grad school and getting to go to one of the top gyms in the area. Man, this is like everything is going right with my life so far. So ultimately, what's my reflection on everything? Well. I thought that the CMU degree was really great. I learned a lot of things. The CMU alumni network is really powerful. At a lot of companies, a lot of the workforce is CMU and they have a lot of referrals and there's a lot of help you can get even after you graduate. The amount of effort that the guidance counselors put into getting their students jobs was really so much. I mean, it's something like every single person had a really high paying job 
once they finish the degree and they really go and help you build a resume. They help you get everything done so you're really not being left behind. So while I was at CMU, I did the job applications process, I did some lead code stuff, I applied for Amazon, and then that's gonna be another story for another video. So yeah, hope you guys got to learn a little bit about what it was like for my whole grad school process, maybe get some ideas about how you can apply for itself too. I really think if that you really wanna learn and get something that will benefit you in the long run, a master's degree is really cool. But yeah, stay tuned for more. Thank you.